Hello, my name is Barney Zorro, and I'd like to thank you for taking the time to uh, view the webinar today. Um, I'd like to just give a quick introduction to what the, uh, the AMBA system is, uh, talk a little bit about the challenges in cell line development, uh, and then whiz through a few uh, industry data slides and a case study uh, demonstrating how AMBA can be applied to transform cell line development. So, um, so what is AMBA? Well, AMBA is a high productivity bioreactor system. Um, there are two key elements to the, to the system. The uh, disposable microbioreactors, which have a 10 to 15 mil working volume, um, and they have a real nice um, scalability uh, characteristic for bioreactor performance. So uh, that, that's really good. Uh, they're also single use, so it's very quick to set up the experiments and clean down at the end, so you get a much faster turnaround. Um, the automated workstation can take 24 or 48 of the uh, single-use reactors, so it's really pretty high throughput system for, for bioreactors, and with a with a low uh, FTE requirement, which uh, allows you to do quite a bit quite a bit of work with the system there. So, where is amber used? Well, um, amber is used in many cell culture applications, but mainly um, in a cell line development kind of kind of applications. Um, so. Uh, the cell lines uh, would be created uh, and then some early, early end, very high throughput screening, maybe a fax method or something like that. Um, and finally coming on to batch and particularly fed batch screening, which has traditionally been carried out in uh, shake flasks uh, and then moving on into benchtop reactors, which you see on the right here for process optimization. Um, so the high level challenges um, uh, in this area of cell line development uh, remain the same really, do more with less, decrease project timelines, increase the productivity and the quality attributes for the target protein. And, and we've been hearing that product quality and, and actually uh, timelines or time to market are, are really the most critical things for, for biosimilar development. Uh, but what does this mean uh, down at the laboratory level? Well, it really translates into issues around uh, scalability of the, the scale-down models used for the early screening, um, consistency of the experimental results, and th actually the throughput of the scale-down models uh, that we see here, the shape flasks and the benchtop uh, bioreactors. So both of those um, models are really very manually intensive, uh, and this can affect the experimental consistency and error rates, uh, and also does limit throughput significantly, um, which makes it hard to reduce those project timelines. It can also mean long hours and weekend work for the staff involved, which, which isn't always fun. The biggest issue with the shape flask really is the scalability of the model. Um, without proper pH or DO control, the shape flask uh, has been proven now in the literature to be a relatively poor model for, for clone performance in larger reactors in, in many cases. So the, the issues are that when you pick the wrong clones with a shape flask, um, you, you're likely to need greater effort and timelines for the process optimization studies that you'll get into later on. And the worst case scenario uh, could be uh, that your, your scale-up clones fail um, at, at the scale-up stage, and, and that could really force uh, extended rework. Um, so AMBA has been applied um, in many companies now uh, in this area um, to replace the shape loss and the reactors, but we've also seen it in small-scale parallel um, protein production, transient transfection, in-cell ex cell expression, and a range of uh, regenerative medicine applications uh, with, with uh, suspension stem cells, embryoid bodies, um, microcarrier cultures. Uh, and we've also uh, recently seen a couple of companies looking at a chemostat model for perfusion culture. Um, so that's really something that's quite new, being able to scale that uh, perfusion type process down to the 10 to 15 mil scale and really uh, get high throughput there. So quite, quite interesting developments. Okay, so... Um, this this uh, data came from a, from an AMBER experiment, uh, an industry customer um, in, in the USA, and they looked at a range of uh, conditions in, in their AMBER um, experiment, uh, and, they, and they looked at duplicate AMBER vessels for each of the conditions. Uh, now, here they were looking at the consistency of the results between duplicates. So what they did was they plotted one AMBER uh, replicate on the x-axis and the second AMBER replicate on the y-axis. So we'd like to see a nice one-to-one uh, -one parity plot here, and they're looking at cell count, product titer, and viability. Uh, and actually, that's what we see in, in each case. Um, the cell count at the top left does have some scatter in there, 
Um, but that's sort of largely down to the um, scatter that's inherent in, in the cell count assay. Uh, the viability we see is grouped right up at the top end, which we'd, which we'd like, hope, to see, hope to see. So that skews the R squared value. Um, but looking at the product tighter there, you can really see this is actually quite a precise assay. Uh, and you can really see the consistency in performance uh, between the amber replicates there. So they said uh, duplicate amber vessels were highly reproducible for cell count viability and titer. So that's really giving you um, greater resolution in your data and, and helping you to make decisions between, for example, different clones or conditions that might look quite close. Um, but with this resolution, you should be able to see which one is better. OK, so uh, next slide. Um, so this is um, this is an experiment that I actually ran, ran this for myself. So it's one of my favourite slides um, at Sanofi Aventis in Paris, and uh, we took the amber uh, in there on a, on a demonstration and um, looked at uh, running duplicate amber vessels in parallel. Um, against a 5-litre sartorius reactor that was running at, at the same time, a fed batch culture. Uh, and the error bars that you see there are, are actually plus or minus 20% kind of acceptance criteria uh, on the system. Uh, and uh, the Amber did very well, and they've been using their system for quite a long time now. I'm very, very happy with that there. Stanislas also said that it's easy to set up. Uh, three people from TAP came to set up the device. Uh, it was brought on Friday, set up on Monday, and run on a Tuesday. So we had prepared the um, experimental protocol and so on in advance, but it does demonstrate that it's possible to drop the amber um, into your laboratory and um, get these kind of um, scalability and results uh, really straight away, right off the bat. So it's, it's great to see that um, the system's very easy to, to get going with. Um, moving on to a case study now. So Cobra Biologics is a, a nice progressive uh, European CMO. They got, they got amber quite early. Um, and uh, what they're demonstrating here is how they've changed their uh, clone screening and process optimization workflow um, in migrating to the AMP system. So the top row here, um, first they're using the 24 uh, shape flasks in parallel for a clone screen. It takes a week to do data analysis uh, and then move into the uh, bioreactor process optimization um, studies. Uh, and they run four reactors, four five-litre benchtop reactors at a time, and it takes about a week to clean them down, set them up, and get ready for the next run. So um, in total there, they've got 18 weeks for 24 uh, benchtop bioreactor runs um, to do a 24-vessel uh, um, PD study with a two litre, uh, sorry, two weeks at the end there for process verification uh, as well. Now, moving to the AMBER system, uh, they've uh, changed from the shape flask to the more advanced AMBER system um, and reduced the timeline with the high throughput um, AMBER bioreactor by uh, making all of those benchtop reactor um, uh, runs in parallel in a single AMBER test. Uh, that also, the benefit there is by uh, using the same inoculum, the same um, user, uh, the same reagent, batched everything uh, in that run. That's really adding to the consistency of the experiment by doing it in parallel as well. So overall, the timeline there has um, been reduced from 22 weeks uh, down to six weeks. So that's something like 60 to 70% reduction uh, in timeline um, for this workflow. And that's really coming from the, the high throughput uh, capability of the AMBER bioreactor. So quite significant um, gains can be made there. Um, OK, and uh, at COBRA, they've also um, implemented a, a variety of different uh, bioreactor design of experiment studies. And it's worth commenting that um, uh, we, proteomics, metabolomics are, are still sort of developing areas. So uh, the cell culture um, biology is really, it really means that these processes are still a bit of a black box. So to take the, the sort of QBD uh, approach to uh, process um, validation and so on, um, it's really necessary to, to implement bioreactor design of experiment studies to understand the process space, to demonstrate control of the process, um, and so on. So bioreactor design of experiment studies is something that's been practically very difficult to implement in the past um, due to the capacity limitations around those reactors. Um, but we'll come on and we'll see now um, what COBRA have been able to do in this area. Um, so they started out with a media screen in, in cultiflast for the base media. 
Uh, that's the first blue bar. And then moving on to um, screen a range of chemically defined seed media uh, in the amber. Um, that brings the gains, productivity gains, to achieve the second bar. Uh, then there was a design of experiments feeding optimization, so time of feeding, volume of feeding, you know, frequency and size of aliquots. Uh, which, of course, are all done automatically by the Ember robot. Um, and that's given another improvement in, in productivity as well. And finally, looking at uh, spent media harvest and, and looking at feeding um, with an amino acid supplement or different supplements, um, they've been able to increase the titer to, to the last bar at the end there. So seven-fold uh, titer increase over three Amber experiments in, in under two months. So it's really quite a, quite a dramatic improvement in productivity in a, in a really quite a short space of time. So they've really been able to do some, some very good work there. It's quite nice to see that. Okay, so we've also been very, working very hard um, at, at here at TAP Biosystems to improve and to con constantly develop the AMBER system. Uh, we've got a lot more options um, around the system now which have been designed to help accelerate the work e and make it even easier in the laboratory. Um, so we've got a cooled version that's available now to uh, allow larger temperature shifts, choke cultures going down to sort of 28 to 32 degrees C uh, and in allowing insect cell cultures 26, 27 degrees C as well. Uh, we've got an integrate, uh, integrated cell counter. You can connect up to the uh, the vice cell or the CDEX cell counters, um, and that that means that you can you know you can you can have your cell counts done in the night time or, or just before you arrive in the morning. Um, so you just turn up at work nine o'clock and find that your results are, are ready for you to start analysing already. Uh, we've got a pH um, mod analysis module integrated, which automates uh, pH calibration, refining pH control. Um, and the new version 5 software uh, streamlines data import. So if you wanted to bring in your, your glucose or other metabolites into the AMBER software, that's, that's really quite easy to do now. Um, and there's an equation editor in version 5 as well. And that means that you can actually set up quite complex feed calculations based on the combination of cell count, um, those external parameters as well. Uh, and that's, that's really proving to be quite nice. Um, uh, and really making the system a really, really very walk away in terms of the automation. You can just leave it to figure out what it needs to do to feed itself um, and so on. So it's really getting to be quite good. Um, and we've got a LIMS um, data output option to help with the, uh, the data output and reporting workflow. So you could connect the system up to your uh, network, to the existing laboratory LIM system that you've got. And it, if you've got the reports prepared in your LIMS, you could have it just dump out the data automatically and prepare the, the data analysis with, without having to do anything there either. It's very helpful, particularly when it's a high throughput um, system for generating a lot of data. Um, and we've also got a couple of options for training. Um, we've got an extended training model with our TAP Amber experts, um, so they can create a customized process for you according to your, your level of um, knowledge of automation as well. And that really helps to accelerate the, um, the Amber adoption in the laboratory. We've seen very good results um, with that as well. So just to recap, you know, how can AMBER transform cell line development? Well, improving scalability to, to benchtop and production reactors, it's really quite a step change in capability of the model. Um, so you can screen clones earlier in your process in bioreactor conditions. You reduce risk um, associated with uh, picking the wrong clones uh, in a shape flask. Um, and you can you can replace benchtop reactors for some early PD studies. Uh, uh, and that's really up to, up to you what you would use it for there. Um, really, really increase the throughput of bioreactor experiments um, with the automation, reduce the timelines of the project, free up your scientist time uh, for more analysis, better decisions, greater productivity in the laboratory, uh, and the automation get, you know, really brings better consistency and data quality there as well. Um, and really a big, a big win is the capability to, to do bioreactor DOE studies. We've seen that as really being done as a matter of course in a, in a number of places now, and, and it's increasing all the time. So really a step change in, in what people can do around cell culture. Increase your knowledge of process design space uh, and optimize productivity and product quality you know, all in one experiment. So um, that's it from me. Um, I'd like to thank you again for taking the time to uh, view the webinar today. 
um, you uh, you can uh, get hold of me um, on the email that was at the front of the presentation or um, contact one of our specialists through the, the email addresses uh, that you see here. So thanks again, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the, the webcast. Goodbye.